Hi friends, my name is Namding. In this video, I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know about ISAs, individual savings accounts. I will also be sharing all the new ISA changes that will be effective from April 2024. For those that watch till the end, I will be sharing a bonus tip that can save you thousands of pounds. Okay, let's start with the definition of an ISA. An ISA is a savings or investment account where your gains are not taxed. Yes, you heard me right. They are not taxed. I want you to imagine two things. One, a draw chest and a piggy bank. Remember, the draw chest will have lots of drawers in it, which are very important. We will come back to that later. Think of your ISA as the piggy bank with a special feature. And what is that feature? The feature is as long as you put your money in this piggy bank, you won't be taxed no matter how much your money grows. You might be asking, Namdi, why is this important? This is very important because as you well know, if you are an employee or a business owner, a percentage of your salary or profit is collected by the taxman on a monthly basis. A taxman doesn't end there. He also comes for your side hustle and returns on your savings and investment that are done outside of an ISA and that is why your ISA is very very important. So can you take all your money and put in an ISA? I wish that were the case. The maximum you can put in an ISA is £20,000 per tax and the tax year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. I am currently shooting this video in January 2024. That means, for example, if I have not added any money to my ISA all through, I have till the 5th of April this year to add £20,000 before a reset. That means that from the 6th of April 2024, I would have a new allowance of £20,000 till the 5th of April 2025. The thing about ISAs is you can't carry over your allowance. So if you don't use it, you lose it. Another thing about ISAs is that there are different types which we will go into in a minute and that means that you can put your whole allowance into one type of ISA except the lifetime ISA or you can split that allowance across multiple types of ISA. For the lifetime ISA or LISA you can pay £4,000 every tax year. That means that if you deposit the maximum in a LISA, you have £16,000 that you can put into other types of ISA, making it a total of 20000 Before I explain the different types of ISA, let's talk about the changes that is going to be taking effect from April 2024. The Chancellor of the Exchanger, Jeremy Hunt, in his autumn statement made five changes to the ISA that will take effect from April 6th, 2024. The first change has to do with multiple ISA subscriptions. Let's go back to the piggy bank and chest of drawers analogy that I gave earlier. The piggy bank is your ISA account, but the chest of drawers is the platform that holds your piggy bank and your money in that piggy bank. Examples of these platforms are Vanguard, Free Trade, Hargreaves Lansdowne, Moneybox, AJ Bell, just to name a few. You have to keep your piggy bank in one of the drawers in this chest or platform. And each drawer can be a fund that you're going to invest in or a fixed savings, for example. So, the piggy bank is your ISA account that holds your money and allows you to grow tax-free. The chest of drawers is the platform. This is where you house your piggy bank, for example, Vanguard. While each drawer in the chest of drawer equals a fund or savings account, each drawer represents a different way to either invest or save your money. I want us to keep these three explanations top of mind because they are very important and we will come back to that later. If this is making sense, please like this video so that more people can find it and while you're liking it, also subscribe so you don't miss more of our videos in the future. Back to the first ISA change that is going to take effect in April 2024 and that change is multiple ISA subscriptions. Currently, you can only use one subscription of an ISA type during the tax year. Remember, the tax year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. That means that in a tax year, you can only pay into one platform for each ISA type. For example, if I started paying into my Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA this year, I can't switch to another platform to pay into a Stocks and Shares ISA, even if I have other accounts in other platforms. But from April 20 
2024, the government will allow us to pay into multiple platforms in a taxi, of course, up to the maximum of 20k. I believe that this is a fantastic idea because we can switch providers media. The second change is that from April 2024, we can do partial transfers between ISA providers. This is also linked to the first point and it provides more flexibility for us and also for us to take advantage of any perks that will come up. We are not locked into an account or a provider. A third change is that the requirement to reapply for an existing dormant ISA will also be removed from April 2024. The fourth change is that innovative finance ISA, and I'll explain what that ISA means in a minute, would allow investment to long-term asset funds and open-ended property funds with an extended notice. So, big words. Let's break down what exactly long-term asset funds mean and open-ended property funds. Long-term asset funds simply means that you can invest in assets like infrastructure such as solar farm, airports, hospitals, or you could invest in private equity or venture capital. This provides some sort of diversity, early fund, early business investments. While open-ended property funds with extended notice periods is basically property funds. But typically, you can buy and share these funds throughout the year, but you must give a notice. And usually, for funds like this, the notice would be several months before you can withdraw your money. The last change that Jeremy Hunt made in the autumn statement has to do with fractional shares. Some fractional shares contracts will be eligible for ISA investments. And what exactly is a fractional share? Imagine a group of friends pulling money together to buy a pizza and then each person takes a piece or fraction of the whole pizza. That's what fractional shares are. Fractional shares are basically a slice of one share of a company like Google, Apple, Facebook. This change needs a lot more clarity from the government and it came after the HMRC suddenly decided last year that fractional shares are not to be bought through an ISA. The truth is, these changes are very welcome. If there are any financial concepts you want me to explain, please share them in the comment section. And also, if you've not subscribed, please do so to enjoy more videos like this. Before we look at the different types of ISA, it's very important to note that depending on the ISA provider, the ISA accounts can be either flexible or inflexible. Flexible accounts allow you to withdraw and deposit money from your ISA account during the financial year without it affecting your ISA allowance. However, with inflexible ISA accounts, whenever you withdraw money, that portion of your allowance for that year is lost. Let's say you have an ISA account and you deposited £10,000. Your remaining ISA allowance is £10,000. Then you decided to withdraw £5,000. With a flexible account, your remaining allowance increases from £10,000 to £15,000 because you withdrew £5,000. But with an inflexible ISA account, you still have £10,000 as your remaining allowance. So the total amount, if you end up contributing to the maximum for that tax year, will be different for two different accounts. The flexible, you would get your whole 20 k invested. While for the inflexible, it's going to be £15,000. Now let's talk about the different types of ISA. The first type of ISA we're going to be talking about is the cash ISA. This ISA is for holding cash, as the name suggests. And any interest you receive in this account, you won't pay any tax. Some ground rules for opening this account. You need to be 16 or over to open this account. There are also different types of cash ISA. There is a fixed cash ISA. There are also cash ISAs where you lock your money for some time without having access to it. And there are some others that you lock your money, but you can access your money after you've given a certain notice period. Cash ISAs are best to keep money you need in the short or medium term. I would say maximum five years. If you want to open a cash ISA, Make sure you also use a comparison site to compare all the features so that you can see which one best suits you. The next ISA we are going to be looking at is the stocks and shares ISA. This ISA is very, very exciting because you can invest in the stock market with this account and you won't have to pay a single tax when you sell your stocks for a profit or when you get dividends from your stocks. Compared to the cash ISA, you need to be 18 and above to open a stocks and shares ISA account. The maximum you can put in this account is £20,000 per tax year 
And if you have another type of ISA account that you're contributing to, for example, a cash ISA, it's going to be less what you've invested or contributed to that account. In a stocks and shares ISA, you can invest in index funds, ETF bonds, and this makes the stocks and shares ISA just perfect for building wealth because the stock market over the long haul gives a higher return on your cash. I have to say, if you don't have a stock and shares ISA as yet, go and open one today and start making monthly contributions, even if it's just a small amount. You could check the description. We have a video showing you step by step on how to start investing. The third type of ISA account that we are going to look at is the lifetime ISA, commonly called LISA. This ISA is a flexible account for two purposes, retirement planning and buying your first home. As a result, it has unique rules that differentiate it from other ISA types. First, you must be 18 or over, but under 40 to open a lifetime ISA. Your maximum contribution is £4,000 each tax year until you're 50. Take note of that. That means that you must make your first payment into an ELISA account before you're 40 years old, and then you can continue making contributions till you're 50. What makes the lifetime ISA very special is that the government will top up whatever you put in that account by 25%. So if you put in the maximum of £4,000 in the tax year, the government will give you an extra thousand pounds if you put in a thousand pounds in a tax year the government will give you 250 pounds and so on you can hold the funds in this account in either cash or stocks or a mixture of both but you can only withdraw the funds in your lisa for a couple of reasons after the first anniversary of you opening the account without penalty those reasons are one buying your first property and the property has to be less than four hundred and fifty thousand pounds you also have to use a solicitor to purchase this property as the funds will be paid directly to the solicitor and you have to buy the property with a mortgage. The second way you can withdraw money from this account without penalty is if you are over the age of 60 and that ties into the retirement aspect of it. And lastly, if you have unfortunately been diagnosed as terminally ill and have only 12 months to live. So what happens if you withdraw the funds for any other reason? You will have to pay a withdrawal fee of 25%. The next ISA we would look at is the Innovative Finance ISA. Many people have not heard about this one. To open this account, you have to be over 18. And and what do you do with this account? This account allows you to invest in peer-to-peer -peer lending. What exactly is peer-to-peer -peer or P2P lending? Peer-to-peer -peer lending is like matchmaking. You register on a platform and invest your money and then you're matched with people who will borrow your money and pay back with an interest. The platform takes a cut of that interest and they give you the rest. The last ISA we will talk about is the Junior ISA. As the name suggests, this ISA is for the kids. You must be under 18 to get this ISA account. And this ISA account is managed and operated by either a parent or a guardian till the child is 18 years old. The maximum amount you can put into a junior ISA is £9,000 every tax year. And this £9,000 is different and separate from your 20000 ISA allowance. The child can take control of the account when they are 16 but can't withdraw till their 18th birthday. Also, a child can't have a junior ISA if they already have a child trust fund. And just like the LISA, the junior ISA can also be in cash or stocks. I'd like to say that if you don't plan on using the money in an ISA account for the next five years, it's better to invest in stocks and shares, either through the junior ISA or the LISA. It's practically useless keeping the money in a cash ISA. I'm going to wrap this video with a summary of the important points that I've mentioned all through this video. A lot have been said and it's important that we go away with the key points. Number one, the ISA limit is £20,000 per financial year, which runs from 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. And if you're in a relationship, that is 20,000 each. If you also have kids, each of them have a separate 9,000 pounds allowance tied to the junior ISA. Number two, choose the right type of ISA. Cash ISAs are for savings. Stocks and shares ISAs are for growth and long-term investing. Lifetime ISAs are to buy your first property or retirement. It's important to pick the right one that match your goal. Number three, flexible ISA accounts allow you to withdraw and redeposit money without impacting your allowance. This is perfect for unexpected expenses where you have to withdraw from your accounts. 
If you've watched the video up to this point, congratulations. The bonus tip that I want to share that is also going to help you save money and is going to help you avoid the common financial mistakes that people make. And what is that bonus tip? Look out for fees when opening an ISA account. Fees like management fees, exit fees, etc. Fees associated with the account of piggy bank. These fees can be associated with the account itself or piggy bank. It could also be associated with the chest or platform or with the drawer in the chest or funds. This is especially important with stocks and shares ISA. This is especially important with stocks and shares ISA because fees will definitely eat into your returns. The truth is as many as 90% of actively managed funds don't beat the global index in the long term. To see the real impact of this, the average fee a fund manager charges is 2%. And let's assume that the one you picked managed to deliver the average return of the global index, which is 10%. And remember, 90% don't do this in the long term. So your odds of finding this manager is not in your favor. Let's say you invest £200 monthly for 30 years. With a 2% fee, you would lose a shocking £154,000. Think about that. I hope that account is worth £154,000. So please compare providers and choose low cost option, which are passively managed index funds for maximum return. I have a video that takes you step by step investing in index funds that's in the description i hope you found this useful if you have any questions type it in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching until next time live your best life